Carving a turkey can be sometimes a little bit scary because it's a lot of meat, it's a big old animal. Hi, I'm Alfie. I'm a chef tutor at the Waitrose and Partners Cookery School and today I'm going to be showing you how to carve a turkey. We've got our lovely bronze turkey right here. This is cooked for packet instructions and we've let it rest for at least half the cooking time. Don't worry about your turkey getting too cold while it's resting, it's really large. It takes a long time for that heat to get in it, so it takes just as long for it to escape. So I've got a carving knife and I've also got a carving fork as well. They are two main weapons for this. It needs to work for you, so you don't want to be moving around too much when you're carving something. So the best thing I'd say, I'm going to move this like so, because the first part of the bird I'm going to go for are the legs, I'm going to remove those. The legs always are tucked into the cavity of the bird. Make sure they're moving freely. The skin between the breast and the leg there, there's a big gap after it's cooked. If your knife's nice and sharp, you should just be able to pretty much touch your skin and it moves away. And then you do need to be quite tough with it. Pull it through the cavity and then you're just going to break it. And I say break it, the joint should come away really easily. Hold it down and then what that's going to do is it's going to bring out the joint that we need to go through. So through that joint, and then we have one leg, like so. Now I'm gonna put all of my legs and my wings onto a plate, and I'm gonna put my breasts onto another plate as well for carving later, for slicing. And then it's time to move on to the other leg. So same thing, again, you're just repeating the process. If anyone's ever heard of a turkey crown, when you buy them sometimes, about legs or anything like that, this is the crown here. Wings are still attached, but you can remove this part of the body really easily by just going through. So you cut off all of that loose skin and what is kind of a bit of the rib cage there, and then just crack. Now this is gonna be really good with the rest of the carcass as well for things like stocks. This bit here where the legs attach, this is called the oyster. It sounds a bit strange to call it an oyster, but chickens have oysters. Um, turkeys have oysters. This is the most tender part of the chicken or of a turkey or any kind of bird. So it's really highly sought after. This is really tender. Um, so don't throw that into a stock. Do remove that and keep it. It's really good meat. So I'm now going to turn the turkey. I'm going to start on the wings now and remove those. You can leave the wings on as well if you are a bit worried about it becoming too unstable because it is a bit like a stabilizer, but it's easier just to remove the wings now. I'm going to go in with one cut just to help you guys there, you see. I've got my joint, and then go through, and then remove your wing, and then again, we're gonna make one more cut on the other side. And then for our breast, we've now got the backbone running along here. We're just gonna, with our knife, follow that all the way down, and then you should be able to feel that bone running. And then to one side, I'm gonna start on the right, you're going to make one nice movement towards yourself and then down where the wishbone would be and then you can just remove. And then for our other breast, we just go on the left side and go all the way down, just pull away and you have your other breast there. And here's all the turkey carcass. This would make a fantastic turkey soup or a turkey stock. So I'm going to move on to our breast first. My advice for not letting this get too dry when you're carving it is as soon as it's rested for the perfect amount of time, you want to carve it and then serve it quite quickly. Because when you carve it and you start cutting into the meat, that's when it starts to lose all of that moisture. And with our breast, the grain's running this way and we'll go in against the grain. In and then back again. So for me, I'll always slice breast about a centimetre and a half thick. It's going to lose moisture if you cut it really, really thin. I'm going to do the same with the second breast as well, so against the grain. It's always nice to arrange the breast in its whole form like that, so just slightly ajar so you can see where it's being cut. We can also put those oysters on as well, and then we can move on to our legs and our wings. We've got the thigh and we've got the drummer here. Again, same anatomy as a chicken, just a lot bigger. So you'll find that there is the joint. You feel your finger, you'll feel the joint, and then just through. So you've got one drummer and a thigh. Now for your wings, take off the tip of the wing. That can go in your carcass bit. Finding the joint, going through, 
And on something like a chicken, it'd be absolutely tiny, but a turkey, it's a really substantial bit of meat. So that's all of our turkey on our plate, ready to go. It's quite a big bird, and you may not be serving as many people this year, so I'm gonna pull some back, dress it up, and make it look pretty for the table. So I'm gonna keep on two drumsticks, definitely keep on some thigh, and maybe a wing as well. So I've got a little plate over here with some nice little bits. We've got some figs, we've got some clementines, we've got some herbs, and we've got some nice fresh cranberries as well. So I can place my little bunch of herbs just there, a couple of figs, and then just finish it with a few lovely fresh cranberries as well. That is our perfectly carved turkey, ready for our perfect Christmas dinner.